<laughs> Everybody stand in one place, do this right here. We give a lot of credit to the Jay-Z's and the D's of the world, but here you are doing exactly what they're doing with the restaurants and the liquor and your clothing line too, and, and you're doing it better. What is it about your way of doing business as opposed to other country acts? At the end of the day, we get probably 100 offers a year to do something brand, branching out brand-wise, and you turn down 99 of them. But once in a while, one pops up that makes complete sense. If you have 25 bar and grills in 25 major markets, and most of those markets, Minneapolis, Pittsburgh, Detroit, Chicago, Denver, Cincinnati, Oklahoma City, Dallas, LA, Phoenix, Tucson. If you have 25 in those, and I've got a new artist on my label, I, and I want to send, it, send this person on a radio tour, I have to go find 25, 30 cities to send them to. I have to find 25, 30 venues. I have to arrange for catering for 25 or 30 different program directors and staff at radio stations to come at this place, then I have to serve them liquor and then we have to perform and do it again on the next night, you know. This way, I take my new acts to these new bar and grills, bring the radio in, the food, the liquor's there, they're ready to go, they're in Toby's house, they're drinking Toby's liquor and that's Toby's act, and we move the next town to do it again, so, all, so it's synergized. So the bar thing made sense with my label. The liquor thing made sense because it's the house drinking. So it, it, it's all steps where you go, you know what, there's more plus check marks, more pros than there are cons to doing these things. So what was the moment when you, know, when you thought to yourself, I'm really rocking it with the music, I want to expand into restaurants, into liquor, into clothing? When we opened the one at Vegas, it was like, this is my hub, everybody likes to go to Vegas, and this will be the place where all my people hang, I can put all my USO memorabilia up, uh, military people can come there when they get out back from deployment and they know when they come by there they're going to be treated good and have a home, that kind of thing. So it was like filled a bunch of little things that I wanted to do. And then when it was so successful, it was like, okay, well, this, then some the people in Oklahoma City said, Bricktown's blowing up downtown. Let's build one down here. So we did. Success. Tulsa, success. And then they just started pop, 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 pop. They somehow fill a, fill a void in these cities. Now you couldn't go to any southern city uh, and just pop one in and say it's going to be a success because it doesn't fill a void. Mm. You've got meat and three and southern and soul food cooking on every corner in the south, but you fill a void in Minneapolis, you fill a void in Detroit, you fill a void in Boston, you fill a void in Vegas. When you get southern people in that were raised eating that way and you can't get it nowhere else in town, then you pop in there and all of a sudden you got it then people say, hey, next time I'm there, one day at lunch, I'm going to swing over and get that. Okay. Because it's not on everybody's menu. And, and now you're populating uh, the bar part of the bar and grill with your own liquor. One of my best friends in the world, sweetest soul you ever met, Sammy Hagar. For years, uh, I've been going to Mexico. And uh, he had the Cabo Wabo tequila. And uh, he'd always tease me, saying, don't you get no ideas, boy, about <laughs> getting in the liquor business and, and robbing me on, competing me on my tequila. Well, I started hunting whiskey because that's what I, you know, I always drank whiskey. Whiskey was all taken and spoken for, so it was hard to find something to blow up in the whiskey world. And, I, and everybody had a vodka. A lot of celebrities had vodka. A lot of celebrities had wine. And so I just went, you know what? I go to Mexico all the time. There is very little market for mezcal. And I thought mezcal may be the thing because the natives down there where I go into Mexico all the time for years, that's what they drink. They don't necessarily drink tequila. They drink, they call it Mexican moonshine. It's made from the agave cactus. It's not made from the blue agave. It's made from the wild green. They smoke it in a smoker. And if you were drinking it in the dark, you would swear it was some kind of scotch or because it's got that smoky flavor barrel taste. I started the liquor thing so I would have my own house drink mm. in my bar. If people see that as the premium mezcal on the market and it grows, so be it. It's just another leg in and, and you're w in trying to push your brand, but if it doesn't, I'm still gonna have it as my deal, you know, as, as my thing. I'm very proud of what we've accomplished, and I think by Forbes picking this interview out to be in a magazine that it tells everybody in my crew and staff uh, organization up and down, Bob, that we work hard, we accomplish a lot. We've built this thing from nothing. 
This was a van and a trailer and five, six nights a week in a nightclub 20 years ago to, to being in freaking Forbes, you know what I mean? He's got the red, white, blue. 